think that's what we're seeing now with this overlap between um, the full-blown myeloproliferative neoplasm driven by JAK2 PV and CHIP with a low allelic burden, both having the same risk. And so how do you sort that out can be very difficult and how you intervene uh, also even more difficult. But in PV, I think we've given the audience some good uh, information about how to manage these patients currently. Um, let me turn the last few minutes in, in, of this section to maybe some new things coming along. And um, a group of um, uh, small molecule inhibitors that are in development in a number of malignancies are the MDM2 inhibitors. Um, John, do you want to tell us about indacinutrin? Sure. So um, P53 is really essential for cell fate in, in multiple uh, ways. And MDM2 is a protein that negatively regulates P53 uh, function. Uh, P MDM2 has been shown to be upregulated uh, in primary PV and MF cells. It's a, it's a viable therape therapeutic target. Uh, the laboratory of Ron Hoffman has um, published some nice data that shows that you can use a small molecule inhibitor to inhibit that interaction between uh, MDM2 and P53 in order to upregulate the pathway that seems to be suppressed uh, and therefore sell, send the cell to an apoptotic state. Um, and that even works probably even better in combination with interferon or other drugs. Uh, so we took that into the clinic through, um, through our research consortium and we treated 12 patients in an early phase one study uh, with a desinutlin, which is in uh, active phase three studies in, in AML. And what we found with repeated exposures to a desinutlin, um, that A, you can upregulate the P53 pathway as marked by upregulation of MYC1, a downstream marker, um, but B, you can induce uh, responses that are around 75% in a relapse refractory population, uh, which included um, significant drops in JAK2, V617F allele burden, uh, and even uh, pathologic bone marrow responses. And, what was interesting was the study allowed us to combine those patients who didn't respond with interferon predicated on the preclinical work, and um, you, you were able to salvage those responses. So the, the, it, it gave us the first uh, proof of principle concept to move that, um, that approach forward, um, and it's balanced with GI toxicity, which um, is an issue I th probably as a class of agents that are MDM2 antagonists. But now there's uh, a Roche Global Phase two study evaluating um, idesinutlin in, in high-risk PV patients who've uh, either been on hydroxy and or uh, ruxolitinib, um, and there's a company called Cartos that has a drug, KRT-232, which is a highly potent selective MDM2 inhibitor that's also evaluating uh, the drug in PV and NMF. So it's a, it's a comp that, that's still unfolding, and how best to deliver such a drug in a chronic disease is going to be one of the, the challenges. Yeah, <clears throat> drug development in a disease where patients do so well <clears throat> is difficult. I mean, just looking at the having to define the population of PV patients that are approved for ruxolitinib, that population had to be defined first before we could actually develop the drug there, and it'll be even a greater um, uh, challenge now uh, with, the, with having ruxolitinib and interferon and other choices. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, Robin, um, there's a drug that's been developed in beta thalassemia, hepcidin analog, that's being looked at here. You want to tell us about that? Right. So there is some early efforts with a phase two study in PV, and this would be upfront, so patients who are still requiring phlebotomies, to use this side mimetic to potentially help reduce the frequency of phlebotomies. And it's with the idea that uh, where we see typical phlebotomies causing potentially iron deficiency symptoms, this is hepcidin mimetic is unique in that it helps inhibit the absorption of iron, but doesn't have the effects of the iron deficiency syndromes. So it could potentially be an oral agent, and they're, they're working on getting that in an oral format that uh, patients could use to help uh, reduce the frequencies of phlebotomies early on in the disease course.